What's up, everyone, and welcome back to our Star Wars celebration coverage for day one. We're still talking about the Lucasfilm Studio Showcase. This video is going to be mostly about Skeleton Crew. They did talk about The Mandalorian before that, but what they showed is uh, from Episode 7. It was really great. I really liked it. I don't want to spoil it or talk it even like vague details because yeah. it's going to be out soon and... Some people, you know, aren't into that. Like, they don't right. want to know. You can probably the, find that information elsewhere online. They showed the first couple of minutes of the next episode. They offered the people of the big main three stages to, the uh, the chance to come back tonight to watch the full next episode. So probably won't cover it yet just because it'll be a big spoiler and you guys will see it in a couple yeah. of days. I'm, like, again... There are surely places online you can find that if you want that information, but uh, I'll just say that the scene was really good. I liked the opening scene quite a bit, but we want to focus on Skeleton Crew because that was the new stuff. Uh, we've known that this series is coming for a while, so it wasn't an announcement, but we did get a trailer that I really enjoyed. Jude Law was there. Three of the four uh, child stars were there, mm -hmm. and... Again, like it, this wasn't released and we couldn't film it or anything, obviously. So it's a lot of just, okay, what do we remember seeing? Uh, emotional reactions to it. And yeah, let's dive in. Well, before we talk about what we saw, Kathleen Kennedy did, did briefly talk about the Amblin films and how this was definitely Amblin vibes and how they wanted to make a movie featuring younger kids. They're like between 11, 12 years old, but it's not going to feel like a kid's movie, much like E.T. Yeah. did not feel like a kid's movie. So that was reassuring. Yeah. Th them talking about, you know, the rumors for this pitch was stranger things in space. And I'm like, I feel that I can see that. Mm -hmm. I do think it leans more towards, uh, Goonies and DT and like just the kids on a wacky adventure. Oh yeah, it definitely felt like Goonies too. Uh, but it also had that aspect of uh, where in ET you kind of get Elliot's mom's perspective, and the basically what I remember from the footage is these kids somehow go on an adventure. We don't really know what happens. Like we see them in a classroom, mm. and one of them is very like. Luke Skywalker, I guess, and his thinking of like, don't you ever wish we could do something more exciting? Yeah, it's they're just in like a regular school. They're just regular kids. Yeah. One of one of the kids is an alien. Mm -hmm. A little, n not an Ortolan, but like a blue elephant-ish looking creature. It looks very much like an Ortolan. Like I saw the hands and then we saw the footage and it's, it's a blue elephant type Little yeah, kid. It, it does. It's not an order. It's not Max Rebo, but it it, it looked <laughs> still like a bit of a blue elephant. Yeah. I don't know how else to describe that. Adorable. Yeah. Yeah. Very cute. So I'm going to guess that they sneak onto some ship they're not supposed to. And then whoops, the ship gets like commandeered by pirates or mm -hmm. it takes off and they didn't know it was going to do that. And so they get lost in the galaxy. There were a lot of pirates. Speaking of pirates. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe Vane from The Mandalorian was there. Mm -hmm. so Which a lot of people had had speculated and maybe those pirates or some of the pirates from Mando would pop up in Skeleton Crew, and I think that's definitely the case. Yeah, I think that there were rumors of that swirling around that definitely, minus Gorian Shard, unless he comes back with a oh. cybernetic lettuce face. <laughs> uh, it looks like Vane might be the the key pirate for this episode which is great because i i really liked him in the mandalorian mm -hmm. uh so yeah they they get pulled off into space and we also follow one of the kids parents quite a bit yeah. in the story so that there's still this element of an adult storyline of like our kids are missing and no one's helping us get them back they're not just going to turn up so they're trying to find their children again yeah it looks like it's gonna be a really unique perspective on star wars that we haven't seen in a bit like kids this age we're seeing what their lives are like and what they want to do what they think of the universe at this time which is going to be really neat which i guess that can bring us to jude law's character who it looked like all the kids were in a cell and then you see a key floating by and it goes into Jude Law's hands and one of the kids gasps and goes, you're a Jedi. And he takes his cloak off and that's it. 
like yeah it's a very hello there moment but he doesn't say anything <laughs> yeah which i i don't think he is a jedi this is per- purely speculative i have no information i think he is a force user but maybe not a, a jedi and the kid is just wrongly assuming mm. uh so i i would say that probably puts the kibosh on lor santeca rumors which i i liked that idea and I mean, he could have been able to use the Force back then. We, we don't know. Because or, or, he didn't say yes or no to being a Jedi. That's true. Like He does not confirm that. Uh, it's just that he looked to be Force-sensitive. He could be doing something like in Dr. Aphra. They have uh, mm. gloves that help them emulate the Force. Or, I mean, that was what uh, happened in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Is We saw uh, Kumail Nanjani's character... I forgot. So much going on in my head right now, I <laughs> it, can't remember. <laughs> it felt genuine, though. Like, uh, yeah, it, it felt like maybe he is a Jedi on the run somehow. A Jedi or a Force user or something, because this is five years after Return of the Jedi-ish. Uh, it's around the same time as Mando, so it's like he doesn't have to be in hiding, but yeah, he did seem secretive about it or something. Mm. But he'll probably, it looks like he's going to save the kids and help them out. Yeah. Because we saw a lot of production stills, behind the scenes photos of him and all the kids together, mm-hmm. and that looked really fun. Um, yeah, that, that that one just seemed fun. Like the Amblin vibes were real. The, it, it felt like the Goonies or ET. There were shots in the forest with mm-hmm. like flashlights and fog. Every time we get a forest shot with flashlights in any star war because it's happened a couple of times in bad batch i get immediate et vibes yeah so i i think they were making some purposeful uh nods to amblin there was a skeleton covered in spider webs and i was like yeah, yeah it's very goonies. goonies yeah so it was it was just fun mm-hmm. like uh the the parents story of it all surprised me i don't yeah. know why i didn't think about that but i i think it will provide some decent context into the new republic again kind of like mandalorian is starting to do but yeah it's it felt kind of like you're you're getting a glimpse into like the middle to lower class working folks mm, it, yeah cuz it, it looked like maybe they were just sitting at their office job and yeah. i forget what the dialogue was but it it felt like middle class parents dealing with their jobs and yeah. stress and all of that. And it looked like the father was like in a cubicle and trying to look for his son while on the job and mm. kind of like looking up at his droid uh, manager. Yeah, there was an element of that. I think that's Which a great point. A, a lot of working parents, I'm sure, will really appreciate like the idea of juggling your job and finding and out your kid your, that ran away. Finding <laughs> out your kids are off off on this adventure and you're like oh my god what (laughs) i gotta figure this out without getting fired yeah uh yeah this one just looked like a ton of fun i don't think they set a date for it i i don't even remember if they said 2023 which was the initial plan last year they said it would be in 2023 yeah uh i think there's still room for it because we'll talk about ahsoka in a, a next video but that is august 2023 so if that wraps up i think end of the year could be a december like just just barely 2023 release yeah that feels like it would be a fun holiday release it does so yeah that that that's the overwhelming uh feeling i got from that was like yeah this looks like fun it didn't fill me with the same like oh my gosh star wars fan joy that the acolyte did but i was like yeah this just it looks like a great time yeah so uh we're gonna talk about ahsoka next i think that's gonna be our final bit for the lucasfilm studio showcase so stay tuned for that video and check out the playlist on the screen for our other coverage if you haven't checked that out yet uh but yeah thank you for watching subscribe like the video (laughs) etc um follow us on twitter at star wars explain where we are going to be doing all of our live tweets for the rest of the panels for the rest of the weekend uh, and we'll be continuing to post our Biggs and Grogu picture <laughs> thread adventures yes. as well. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you. <laughs>